All right, this is the CES meeting. Today's date is June 22nd. We have a guest today uh, and hopefully uh, a, a, future, uh, a welcome continuing participant at these meetings, Guy Bedford. Uh, Guy and Luca presented import reflection and, uh, and as a part of that talked about WASM integration. And, uh, and we've welcomed him today to have a conversation about his proposal and how it relates to the proposals that we care about here, including his. And, and Caridi has expressed an interest in that topic as well, and a follow-on topic pertaining to the relationship of Shadow Realm to module support. So uh, I, I'm going to turn the floor over to Guy. Uh, please. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the proposal that was presented for info reflection uh, was uh, grew out of this uh, WebAssembly use case. Um, and I can I can dive into the WebAssembly use case um, in some more detail, um, but in particular, the proposal provides a, a module reflection uh, where you're able to import an uninstantiated module, who's um, uh, which is uh, compiled, unlinked, unresolved, and you have some kind of module record you get back. And the idea for doing this in JS was that um, we want to be able to get these WebAssembly modules and expose them um, within uh, the import system so that they can be um, passed around because WebAssembly modules are objects. They're passed around as objects. Those APIs already exist today, and it's what people use. Um, and a, a way to do that that can, that can be compatible with CSP and security policies. So that, that's like the the driving kind of thing is that the the, the WebAssembly module um, uh, should be able to be associated with the source file that it came from, so that um, when you import this this module, uh, the CSP policy is able to know which exact URL it came from and and validate it. And uh, in in the WebAssembly um, uh, standard workflows today, you have uh, instantiation of modules that's done imperatively in JS. They will require unsafe WASM evolve CSP policies. Um, and uh, in addition, you're using usually fetch to get this module. So it's those, those problems that we're kind of tackling. Um, and when we first presented the proposal, uh, some of the feedback was, could we make this more general for JS? And um, so we were saying, well, if we could just get this, we're seeing that compartments is, uh, is, is starting to reflect this stuff. Could we just reflect a similar kind of reflection and, and just get the module reflection? How, how far does that get us? And it, it leads to, um, it seems to be um, a, a, a really nice model on top of the module system. Um, and uh, uh, it, it'll, yeah, uh, there's uh, already this double module map where you have the, the fetch cache and the instance cache, and it, it further reifies that pattern in a way that we really have to refactor the spec. So it actually ends up being a nice spec refactoring, and it, it fits quite nicely architecturally in terms of reflections, just being these these alternative interpretations that that layer over in module maps. Um, and uh, in, in terms of the cross-cutting concerns, um, I think one of, the, one of the main things that I'm hoping to focus on is what that JS reflection is and how we can share that JS reflection. Because um, initially what I was saying was that we could actually um, specify a module record in the, in the um, import reflection proposal, and then we could potentially seek stage advancement with that reflection. And then we would be able to um, collaborate with compartments to be sure that whatever we're specifying is something that is gonna work with compartments and that we're not duplicating efforts. Um, and then further, I was also suggesting that there might be an imperative instancing API for actually um, uh, creating custom instance of, of these things. And if that's something that also might be useful to look into specifying further as a way to be able to imperatively map do, do the module management. Um, and so those were the kinds of discussions that um, I was hoping to be able to explore further 
a little bit more um, in collaboration with Key Commons. And then, uh, as I say, I'm I'm happy to dive into the WASM use cases. I just uh, don't feel like that should be the, the primary focus for this discussion necessarily. So I hope that makes sense. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, let's actually then punt the issue of connecting the dots with WASM and compart and uh, the the virtual static module record or synthetic or whatever it ends up being called. Uh, we could do that offline or out of band, as it were, um, and perhaps we can do that via chat. At some, um, point. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, discuss the details at any point. But yeah, I think primarily right now, just to think about um, the over the overarching um, set of um, constraints. Yeah, excellent. Um, the first thing and uh, that comes to mind is that <clears throat> the uh, uh, the syntax that you proposed at the plenary is coherent with compartments, I think, provided that the reification of uh, the reification of a module it corresponds to some com concept, some specific concept from the compartments proposal. That is to say, if you say import thing with name from a WASM module with Annotation suggesting that it's not supposed to be executed; it's only supposed to be loaded uh, and compiled. Um, that object corresponds again, like module blocks, more closely either to a module descriptor or a static module record, depending on on the, the on a, whatever additional constraints there are. Um, and as with the module block proposal, I am beginning to be convinced, having conversed with Daniel on this topic that module descriptor might be necessary, the necessary recept rep representation because it closes over on not just the static module record, but um, the, the, the original module specifier, like you say, the URL from which the, the, the co code corresponds and that metadata is probably, is, is as you say, important for CSP. Um, so yeah, and potentially uh, Dino as well. Um, they they kind of contract that at a certain secure level. So um, the having the source of the module be associated with the module is is that is that really important thing that like it's not just like a source text module that was created without an arbitrary string, but we know it was defined in this file, which was fetched through the module system um, at this resource location. And so maintaining that tie, um, that right now all scripts and modules have this, um, the, you know, associated host information about the fetch source and fetch auctions and the credentials and all of this stuff, and to have that that direct association that this is this comes from an original place, um, and and you have that you maintain that linkage through through the object, and I don't think that's actually something we have for WASM modules at the moment. Um, so it would be interesting to explore, yeah, if, if we could get a Wesson record, I mean, I was, I was hoping that it might be possible to, to thread some of the information for Wesson modules when they're imported, because I believe, um, that's what would be involved for CSP integration with Wesson currently in the ESM integration. Um, but yeah, that's, that's worth exploring further as well. So, um, that the object that you reflect associates with its with its secure source is, is important. I have I, have I think a, I agree I, with that 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 the reflectively imported WASM modules actually shouldn't just be WebAssembly.module, but a WebAssembly.module that has uh you know the refer as well as the this other this other metadata. So that's a really interesting point that we kind of clarified in the meeting yesterday. Okay. So, uh, and that's interesting because then that also, yeah, this is all very interesting. I've, uh, so one of the things about the uh, JavaScript modules, that's, that's the part of what we want to keep, you know, we've, we've discussed keeping out of the static module record, but putting into the, um, into the descriptor uh, is also the support for the import.meta does, I'm curious, does WASM itself, it's been a while since I've been involved with WASM and might very well have changed um, uh, since then anyway. Uh, does WASM have any notion like import meta where from inside the code inside the module, 
can ask those meta questions about the location of the module itself? Uh, not, in, not in CoreWASM. Uh, distinguish CoreWASM versus something else? Uh, I don't know if WASI has something for that. Sorry. Uh, ah, did, OK. Did there's also, it? yeah, there's also work on a, a components model for WASM, which is effectively a, um, it's effectively almost like a new binary type um, that has its own unique um, semantics. And uh, WASM components uh, have additional um, special operations that they can do that are separate to normal core WASM. And, and it's, it's still very experimental and um, uh, difficult to kind of rely on at this point, but um, the, um, it, it has actually the ability to instantiate modules in, in the component itself. Um, and specifically WASM modules uh, because they are acyclic um, and uh, imperatively uh, through special instantiation operations. And um, yeah, but uh, in all of that, there is no import meta concept for WASM. There is only the um, this sort of functional instantiation. And I guess that was also partially the, the inspiration for, for thinking about functional instantiation for JS. Um, but sorry, I'm, I'm digressing again. Um, the, um, yeah, there is no import meta for WASM um, and, and the host information um, uh, and, and, and that kind of stuff is, is not visible to, to WASM in any way that I know of. So, um... <clears throat> While the proposal to reify the uh, module record, shall we say, of a WASM module, including the static and dynamic components of it, is coherent with compartments, and I don't object to it being added to the language on that basis, uh, there is another mechanism that is interesting um, that, com that, that, is, that, that potentially is useful for this case that comes from the compartment proposal as, as, as written right now. And that, that flows from um, uh, XS's implementation of compartments, which allows for the possibility of a child compartment to inherit various facets of a module from its host compartment um, if they're delegated by, any, by some number of mechanisms. Um, and th that, that's still in the air, in my opinion. But, um, but one of them is uh, that you can refer to uh, a module from the host compartment by its specifier when you construct a compartment and thereby inherit the static portion of that module into the compartment. Um, and so thereby create a new instance in that compartment of a thing that was previously loaded by the host. Um, and in that particular formulation, you do not need the 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 host com, the the host module does not need to have a reified object um, in order to be able to bequeath that that module to the child compartment. Um, it might not even need the host compartment to have preloaded it. It might like depending on whether. We come uh, depending on what we decide to do with connecting host and guest compartment loader machinery. It might be possible for uh, a guest compartment to just pull uh, to dynamically and asynchronously pull the static module record in through the host, which I think is important because the host is going to be able to do things like respecting CSP and um, and implement host yeah. and import maps and such. So the, the driving use case here, as I, as I say, is, is the fact that in WASM, these modules are objects that you want to get a handle on. And you wire them up manually and link them with, with custom linking records. And um, it is a priority um, for WASM tooling to have the ability to be able to do this in a way that's secure, because right now it's not. And that's the driving motivation for our work on core reflection. And our generalization to JS 
is simply trying to make it more architecturally sound what we're doing. Yes. Uh, so some things that are very harmonious, I think, are that uh, the motivating use case for bundlers and your motivating use case for WASM share a need to be able to express a dependency without executing it in the in the root compartment. Um, so that's that's useful. Uh, it, like being able to express statically that I depend on a thing that I'm not going to execute is necessary in the bundling case because a bundle needs to be able to close over all of the transitive dependencies that will ever be needed at runtime, um, regardless whether of whether they're executed in in the in the host. Um, um, I, yeah, there's a couple, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a, a couple of more uh, things briefly in terms of the interaction with compartments. And um, firstly, based on feedback, I think um, we're, we're, we're not going to approach the instancing API. I think it's clear that that's um, something which um, overlaps too much with compartments. And I think compartments is definitely the better approach because of the, the unification of, of the hook model. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to actually um, uh, potentially collaborate more on some of those compartments things. Um, and so, so thanks, Chris, for the invitation as a champion, because um, loaders are something that are um, something that's been important to us for a long time. And um, see, seeing the, where, where the framing has got to is, is very exciting. Um, and uh, and then uh, on on the import reflection side, um, I, I think it's it, yeah uh, just just about um, working out how we can how we can collaborate on that. Yeah, I I, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, um, may I actually prioritize Carity's question? He's had his hand up for a while. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so um, apologies, I'm I'm playing catch up here. Um, I feel very behind in the conversation. Um, the, so the way I see it is, and, and I'm confused about what the proposal is or what, what the conversation is about. Um, I, I believe there are three different aspects of this conversation. One of them is I have a module. I would like to import something from a Watson module. Um, how can I do that? And I believe that, that that part of the conversation is mostly syntax and so on. So I don't know where we are on that, but I hope that um, from what I was reading, there was some proposal around that, I think from Guy and uh, the, uh, the other folks on how can I uh, declarative define that relationship in order to tap into the module system to get what I need from Watson. Um, the second part of it, I don't believe it's Watson specifically, um, but it, it is how can we create a system where um, the developer have the, 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 the level of control to define how modules would relate to each other and so on, which applies to every kind of module, not only Watson in general. Um, and that's compartment API, loader, import, map, and yada, yada. And, uh, and the final part of it, uh, at least in my mental model, is how can you um, create one of these Watson modules synthetically or, or uh, some sort of reflection that allow me to go and create them and, and make them useful uh, or even combine it and so on. That's, I hope that we're, we're also looking into that part of the conversation, we, we need that kind of reflection at some point in order to construct those modules when people are working them and so on. So it feels to me that we're, the conversation is very convoluted. Obviously, I'm behind in the conversation, but if we can focus on the different areas and clarify the different areas and so on, um, it might be easier for some of those to follow up on the conversation. Yeah, I think that. Um... The, those yes, those are the those are two dimensions of the specification. One of which is how do you import the thing, and then the other is how do you in, integrate something into the uh, an, a, a third party thing into the linkage of a compartment. And I think that um, we might just maybe you and I could one on one at some point to get you up to speed with what I've written, what what 
what has landed so far and what is proposed in the compartment proposal um, is it addresses all of those concerns and in, in just in in various places and ways. Uh, I also see Daniel's hand um, and then I'll, and then Mark. Sure. So I think there I think there are kind of two possible levels of service that we could provide as far as improving integration of uh, you know the WASM component model and WASM tooling with uh, with JavaScript. So one the base level is so that tooling can get by while having uh, you know while not violating CSP. Uh, I think that might be satisfied by a simpler approach with a function-based API rather than a rather than a statement-based API. But I'm still I'm still really interested in module reflection. I think it really serves this kind of higher level of service where we are working in conjunction with compartments. Uh, basically, if we want to expose the WASM component model to JavaScript, if we want to expose kind of the intersection of all of that, then it would you should be able to you know, import JavaScript modules without instantiating them, have some kind of instantiation API. Uh, I like the idea of joining forces on the instantiation API, you know, centering on compartments, or maybe we could have another imperative instantiation API, but we would have to like understand why we want both. Um, if, if module reflection is building towards kind of the second one, it seems, it seems well motivated to me. Uh, if it's focused just on this tooling case or initially on this tooling case, I would prefer to solve the initial tooling case through, through something simpler. I don't understand why the tooling would need to participate in the host module map at all. Uh, maybe this is me catching up on the requirements that tooling is given so far. But if the requirement is CSP, if you had a function that you, you pass in a module specifier slash URL, it fetches it and does compile module, uh, you know, with the system understanding that, you know, it, that doesn't call WASM unsafe eval, that would seem sufficient to handle this only tooling generated output use case. Um, uh, if we've got time to dig into that a bit, um, I, the um, so just to summarize, you're thinking of a, a function like, say, on the compartment that gives you a WASM module for a given resource identifier and does it in a CSV compatible way? Well, well, I'll push back on that because we need to make this to work even when you don't have a compartment. Yeah, so I think they're, you know, they could definitely work coherently without compartments. And, uh, you know, I just am having trouble understanding the motivation. I was able to follow the motivation more clearly when the goal was this broader thing that would have compartments. Otherwise, uh, I guess it boils down to kind of asset references for WASM, which is, which is useful. And the main thing that you would do with those is uh, you could dynamically import them later, just as you could for right. asset references from, for JavaScript. And it asset seems, references for JavaScript nice. also being in use case. Sorry? And asset references for JavaScript also being in use case. Yeah, yeah. I feel suspicious. I mean, I, I feel uncertain if the motivation is boiled down to like, okay, the real only motivation is for tooling. Because if it were that, then... I think there would be other approaches, but but it definitely makes sense in the thinking about it as asset references that you might use dynamic import, you know, with host import maps, not import maps, yeah. uh, model maps on. Or, 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 that's opaque, or opaque references to things in the import system that have certain security properties or security filters that can be applied. And um, yeah, uh, the assets one is kind of a separate discussion, but the idea was that there could be another reflection for assets, some, something like the assets proposal, and that, that it, it might be a layering for these kind of things as well. Um, but that's also kind of a separate discussion. Uh, uh, yeah, on, on, on the motivating use case, as I say, is very much um, secure, getting a secure handle to a WASM module, um, which is impossible today. Um, out of interest in the compartment specification, how would one get a secure reference to a source text? Um, that is, how would you write a secure load hook? 
Uh, I have some thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, um, but, but, but Chris, if you've, if you've got something thought out, please. Yeah, the, the short answer is that what, what has been thought out is that the, there is a, one of the module descriptor, there's a, there's a modular, module descriptor union in the proposal. Um, the exact, I, I, I consider the, the, I think that the proposal is incomplete and also very much subject to a lot of ch uh, possible changes. And I know that, um, and, and just in conversations with our, our, our friends at Modable who implemented it natively, it's still very, uh, like our conversations with them are still in flux as well. So take it with a grain of salt as it's written, but um, one, of the mod one of the module descriptor forms um, allows a guest loader to refer to, um, to refer to a module that was, is loaded by the host compartment and that can go all the way back up to the user uh, pardon the host defined loader that isn't virtualized um, for the realm um, which is to say that it uh, which is to say that you could write a load hook that piggybacks on the the hosts the host defined loader and inherits its security properties presumably um, so that, that would be a useful thing, you think, a useful property in, in some scenarios. It's, it seems like it, it could be. Yeah. Um, Mark, you had thoughts? Yeah, um, I think I'm going to postpone them because I like your starting point better. But let me just tell you sort of what my, what my thoughts were in terms of. Um, uh, I remember there was a Mike Samuel proposal to TC39. They got stalled, but had very, a lot of very good um, uh, it was uh, in order to support C various CSP scenarios, um, but still allow eval of uh, strings from trusted sources. There was this notion of uh, generalizing eval so that you could provide it a object containing a string where the object was branded and then the yeah, host- Trusted types. Is that trusted types? I was gonna. That was gonna be my yeah. next question. Okay, so that is trusted types. So and that is in already. That is in the problem. Okay. So our descriptors are already objects that can be branded, um, and it seems to me that being able that that the same kind of uh, host hooking um, could also say that. I will accept the descriptor of the following form only if it's branded as being genuine. And it's just a question of being genuine because the descriptor itself already describes where the thing came from. So then if it's genuine and where it came from is acceptable to the host hook, then, um, you know, th then the host hook could decide, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and honor this descriptor because it is, it, it is both genuine and where it came from, where it says it came from is acceptable. Oh, um, yes. And the other way that, the way, other way in which this is coherent with compartments is suppose that we take the guy's proposal for module reflection, which is to say that you can get a module descriptor object reified from the host environment. You could pass that to another compartment such that it returns it from its load hook for the same effect, right? So, yeah. So in your in your host compartment, let's say the, the the starting realm, you say import module from module.wasm, etc. You're going to have and and defer the execution. Um, that gives you a handle to the static pardon to the module descriptor for uh, for that thing that has been that has been branded by the browser as being something that has passed to the CSP. Um, yeah. It would return to the compartment through another compartment's load hook. Yeah. I have got some questions uh, about WASM for Guy. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I, how, how are we doing for time on the other agenda items? I um, don't, don't mean to take it all up on, on this topic today, um, but yeah, I can try and keep it brief. Okay. Well, what are, uh, what are the other agenda items? We are not going to get to other agenda items. There, there simply isn't enough time to boot another conversation. So let's follow this through. Apologies, and we have about five minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll paste the link of the pull request in the chat. So just make sure that you look at it. 
that we can talk about next week uh, is important. So, um, uh, so Guy, the um, I don't remember the, the specifics of how it's formulated in the API, but if I recall correctly, when you instantiate a WASM module to create a WASM module instance, um, besides providing um, uh, you know, the, the um, exports to bind to the imports in order to hook up the equivalent of the, the, you know, the export import module graph relationships, uh, you also provide a memory, an array buffer for the memory, and um, you provide a, a function table. And often you instantiate many modules with the same array buffer and the same function table. Uh, but you can provide, uh, um, you, can, you can instantiate with distinct memory buffers and distinct function tables and still link them together into one overall import export graph. Is that all correct? Uh, yes, uh, although practically uh, what ends up happening is that because of the way that things are compiled, you end up with just having one memory per call module usually anyway. So Excellent. it's very rare to share the memory buffers um, and instead the kind of, yeah, the convention is just to have these isolated they end up just being isolated environments, despite the fact that you could, in theory, have this this sort of shared memory. Oh, okay. I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was that the tooling, like the C compilers, um, uh, were really oriented around the assumption that memories and function tables were shared, and that it was fighting against the tooling to make them isolated. Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting one because it it it, it kind of. Um, uh, yeah, so they, uh, that, that, this is one of the things that the, the component model in WebAssembly is trying to tackle, which is to kind of um, be able to do the more granular sharing. Um, okay. And even the component model itself, um, they, and, and that's uh, in general works towards separated memories as well because of the isolation benefit. And so instead focuses on interfaces over, okay. over sharing. So the, I, the other place, is the component model and WASI uh, uh, all related to each other? Because I know WASI was also needed the, the same isolation. So WASI is a host, um, like, like a, a, a platform, a host platform. And it's a, a set of um, uh, imports that you can import and uh, capabilities um, and uh, a platform model. Um, and uh, the component model is, is more like a kind of a, um, a, a different type of WASM module uh, that, that tries to have um, better interfaces that are more secure, in fact, serializable interfaces between a component um, component oh. um, uh, communication, which, which is, would be really interesting if that could um, uh, feed back into JavaScript itself, um, because there's some really interesting work that's being done to define all these interface types and um, uh, make sure that uh, you can get the expressivity while having the, um, the, the uh, modularity. It, it, um, so, um... So is it consistent with all of this to have where you would have, let's say, um, components with that are isolated from each other, each internally have multiple modules that are not isolated from each other, um, that are where so in component A, you might have modules X and Y that share that are instantiated to share a memory with each other. And then uh, uh, component A is linked with component B, where component B has modules P and Q that are what, that have yeah. a distinct memory. Right. That's that's a great question. So what you would usually get is in that scenario you would have like a library only module, which is just functions, but not uh, necessarily memory. And you would import that module as a source of basically function text, and then you would. Um, uh, yeah, then you would kind of be 
re-instantiating those functions against different memories. So for example, you're importing your um, malloc module and then you're instantiating all of your different um, components against this shared malloc memory. Um, and, and yeah, you're wiring together um, the modules. Um, uh, but in general, yeah, so yeah, I guess there is some memory sharing there, um, but it, but it's not really at the tool chain level, if that makes sense, I guess. Um, it's, so, it's more, so, yeah. so let me, so, so this is all great. Um, let me, let me, let me get, sort of get to the punchline. The reason I'm raising this is that one of the things that we've uh, struggled with, with regard to the, um, the relationship between the uh, hardened JavaScript uh, interest in uh, compartments versus the module integration, the purely module integration uh, and mar module harmony interest in compartments is, are, is it just about the modules and, and module loading and managing import namespace or is it also about what global object is uh, the module instance executing its uh, code in the scope of? And it seems to me that the control over what memory is given to which WASM module instance and which, which WAS WASM instantiations share a memory versus which ones are isolated from each other is directly analogous and in fact more than analogous can actually be mapped onto compartments as the way you express that on the JavaScript side, which is you associate different WASM memories with different compartments and then the, our support for cross compartment linkage allows you to do cross com WASM component linkage. And our support for linkage within a compartment allows you to do cross module linkage within a component. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of, um, there, there is a lot of cross cutting stuff here because there, there, a lot of it is dealing with similar problems of isolation and, and um, security and instantiation and things like that. Um, in general, in the way that the WebAssembly semantics are today, the um, it, the memory is instantiated at um, in, like usually you export the memory and it's usually instantiated at um, uh, sort of execution time. Um, in the standard case. So it's the act of, in, of executing the WebAssembly module and uh, that actually brings the, the, the memory um, and, and creates the new memory. So um, that's why it's so important in WebAssembly to have a handle to the module so that you can create a new, um, you can create this new fresh environment and, and do that because that's exactly what you want to do if you want to be able to um, get that that um, that uh, fresh slate, um, and so um, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the way it's been specified. Um, of course, there's a, there's a million ways to um, to do these things, but like yeah, I mean, it's also worth um, you know, I, I think uh, investigating some of the cross cutting stuff because there's definitely interesting conversations to be had there further. Yeah. Um, at the same time, we are where we are today. Um, WebAssembly has an imperative instantiation API and JS has a declarative one and they're different. Um, it's just how it was specified. Was it, you know, if we could go back, would we have done it that way? Well, I don't know, but that's how we are. That's how it's, that how, that's how it is. Um, and so there's also some degree of, of um, working with, with the, the primitives we have and uh, in a way that can, can adapt. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, th does, does that make sense? Uh, uh, in terms of the model or, um, yeah, uh, I, sorry, I, I'll stop. <laughs> I think that the, model, the models are, are coherent actually. And it's interesting that we're arriving at very similar places because we're starting with very similar problems. I suppose it makes sense and that most of the differences are ones of spelling. Um, <laughs> the, I wanted to also think about how we can make the compartments API more harmonious with the case of manually linking 
object, I think toward that end, it might be possible to expose the initialized method of a static module record. Um, and that, that would allow uh, that would allow WASM and JavaScript to be on equal footing for uh, a manually constructed linkage graph, assuming you could find your uh, assuming you could initialize a namespace. Uh, anyhow, there's more to talk about there. Yeah, how about this? Can we continue this this WASM integration discussion offline and, and maybe flesh out some examples with compartments and how that yeah, would work? Yeah, I think that we should pair on that at um, some point. And, and I would also, and, and then one of the things that I really love to achieve is to understand for the import reflection proposal, what that module object would be that we would import. And yes. um, uh, I would really appreciate some guidance on that and um, in, in whatever form. And um, yeah, I hope we can continue that discussion. Yeah, it's sounding like from our conversation yesterday with Daniel and this conversation today, that there's a placeholder type called module block in the fragments and, and uh, fragments and blocks proposal and there's a module descriptor type in the compartments proposal and there's uh, a, a reflected module type in the module reflection proposal these all may be the same thing and the good news is that it is small <laughs> the, the, it should not be too difficult it can be as small as an opaque object and still work i think right yeah. okay in this case it's just an uh yeah an invisible object <laughs> so right. So um, thank you for your time. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, let's come. Let's uh, let's continue this conversation. Um, I'll I'll find you in the loader talk and and we can coordinate a thing. Um, or loader chat and matrix and we can coordinate from there. Um, and Kariti, I owe you an hour of my time whenever you have an hour of your time. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm gonna close the recording.